So on Palm Sunday, the preaching moment is supposed to be short so that we can focus on the passion narrative. And that's not my specialty. Pray for me, a sinner. So, imagine this. What if, when you got here this morning, and you met, who did we meet? Woody and Diane and whomever else was working the table. If you'd, if you'd have met them, and instead of giving you a seat number and, and, a, and a few palm fronds and a prayer book or whatever else it was, what if they had given you a pop quiz on the Bible instead? <laughs> and they'd given you a little piece of paper and everybody's like, I'd have changed churches is what if. <laughs> now, what if they had given you a little pop quiz on like the greatest hits from Sunday school and vacation Bible school? And one of the questions had been this. Write two or three sentences on how Jesus got the donkey that he rode in to town on top of on Palm Sunday. Might you have been like me and answered, like after you got done uh, regretting that you'd ever met me or them or wanting to change churches, after you got done with all of the untoward thoughts, would you have thought, okay, I know this, I know this. And would you have then searched in your memory and said, okay, Palm Sunday. Um, isn't that the one where he sends two disciples, can't remember their names, um, into town ahead of the rest of the disciples, and they're to get a donkey, and the disciples are a little bit nervous about it because they're essentially supposed to steal the donkey. They're going to see a donkey on a street corner, and, and uh, they're just supposed to, like some scene out of Star Wars, like Jedi, knight power, just supposed to say to the master of the donkey, the Lord needs the donkey. And then the Lord is, the, 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 the master of the donkey is going to say, okay, take it. And Would you have gotten somewhere close to that? A couple of guys have to go ahead and get the thing, right? That's what I would answer. So last week, about the middle of last week, I'm studying these texts, these biblical texts, the gospel in particular, with some local pastors in a, in a study group that I'm in, a wonderful group of, of folks, and we look at this, the text appointed for the Sunday, the week before, and just talk about it. I've been doing it for a while now. Great group. And the man who was to read this Palm Sunday gospel for us on this Zoom call that I was on, He's in his mid-60s, I'd say. He's been a pastor in Lexington forever. So he's seen these texts a million times, right? And he reads through the Palm Sunday le lectionary text. And we all sort of, well, I shouldn't speak for them. I sort of tune out because I've been in the church for 45 years and I've heard these texts a million times, so I know this story. Let's just get to talking about it. Well, he reads the text and then he says this. He says, oh my goodness. In John's gospel... Jesus gets his own donkey. That's what he said. At which point I thought, oh, poor friend. <laughs> He's getting a little older. Jesus doesn't get his own donkey ever. I know the story, you know, fill in the blank. Two, the two guys go ahead and steal the donkey. But he doubles down and he says, I mean, he gets it. He's almost talking to himself. He gets his own donkey. So I do a double take. I look down at the text and look back up at him on the Zoom call and look back down at the text. And in John's account, which Father John read this morning, y'all, it's a little throwaway line. Jesus gets his own donkey. And I saw that line, and I thought, the text has been revised. The, the text has been changed. When we, when we got done with that study, I called my best friend Ben, who's a far better priest than I am and knows the scripture better than I do and is smarter than I am. And I said, Ben, did you know that in John's gospel, Jesus gets his own donkey? You ever tell somebody something with such enthusiasm, but they know you're wrong? And so they just meet you with this massive pregnant silence. And you can imagine what's going on there. Oh, bless his heart. How am I going to tell him he's wrong? Well, Ben met me with that silence. Then I hear the shuffling of pages. He's looking it up and he says, oh my God. I've been reading this text for 46 years. I've never noticed that. I hung up the phone with him and I called my mother, who's far smarter than Ben and I put together and knows the text better than anybody on the planet. I said, Mom, did you know in John's gospel, Jesus gets his own donkey? You ever tell somebody something and they know you're wrong so they meet you with a pregnant silence? She met me with the same silence. I could hear the shuffling of pages. She said, oh my goodness. You 
You know what changes, right? It's not the text. Hmm? We change. Thanks be to God, we change. Our hearts get opened up. Our minds get opened up. And we're faithful to the text and we come to it again and again. And we're changed so we see different things. So what I think I'm seeing this Holy Week is that as we follow Jesus, we're not doing things for Jesus. We're doing things with Jesus. Jesus gets his own donkey. We go with him. And what does that mean? Like, what could it mean, the symbol of that, to go with Jesus to get the donkey? Well, my good friend Nancy Davis reminded me of what that means this week. She pointed me to this teaching that then reminded me that I already knew the teaching. What does it mean that he got a donkey? Years and years ago, 20, 25 years ago, I knew these guys down in Tennessee, in Middle Tennessee, on Mont Eagle Mountain. And they were mountain men. They were the toughest guys I'd ever been around. I was in my early 20s, and all I wanted to be was a man, a grown-up, and a tough guy at that, right? Well, I admired everything about these guys. They could build anything. They could fix anything. I'm a truck guy. They had Woody. They had all the best trucks. They had all the coolest toys. They had farms. It just is, they were firefighters. They, they were my heroes, absolute heroes. They were farmers, too, and they had big herds of handsome cattle. And you know what else they had? They had, I'd forgotten this, they had German shepherds. They raised German shepherds. These, these fantastic, sort of proud, stately, disciplined guard dogs, right? Just, I don't know if all, a lot of you can imagine what it was like to be a, a, a boy wanting to be a man, but uh, yeah. So one day I'm hanging out with these guys and they mentioned to me that they've got to go get feed for the donkey. And I sort of did a double take with them. I said, a donkey? To myself, I thought, my heroes don't have donkeys. Donkeys are scrubby little animals. I mean, a donkey? They make funny noise. I said, why do you have a, fellas, why do you have a donkey? And they did a double take on me, and they looked down at me. You know? <laughs> Tough guys. Yeah. And they said, Henry, the donkey's the most important animal on the farm. I thought they were kidding me. I laughed. They said, no, no, we're serious. Well, I grew up just north of Atlanta. We didn't have donkeys in Roswell. I said, well, tell me why. What's the deal with the donkey? And they said, well, the donkey guards the entire herd. Huh? All these cows at night are vulnerable to wild dogs and coyotes, and a donkey lives with them. Our donkeys live with them, and the donkeys will guard every living thing within that, within that fence. And when the dogs and the coyotes come, the donkeys can make great noise. They can run after them. They can kick them. They will protect the herd. I look over at the German shepherds. The donkey. So Jesus went and got his own donkey. Jesus didn't go find a Clydesdale, right? He didn't go find this proud, handsome, tall, powerful, muscle-bound anything. He went and got a scrubby little donkey and rode that into town. It is not, not the most beautiful living symbol, emblematic of the vocation of Jesus in our lives. Hmm? This embodied love of God which guards us from all the coyotes that would press in upon us. Now, here's where the metaphor sort of changes shape. Right? We know this, don't we? The love of God and Jesus Christ will not finally protect us from suffering, will it? It will not protect us from being wounded. It won't protect us from anything breaking in upon us in the night. It will not, the love of God and Jesus Christ will not protect us from death itself. Hmm? Suffering, death, it's a part of life. Now here's the meaning of the cross. What the love of God and Jesus Christ, this, this donkey in our midst, right, protects us from is the power hmm, of suffering or death to name us or claim us for its own. 
So we are Christians when we go down into suffering. Yea, when we go down into the valley of the shadow of death itself. Love goes with us. It's a silly image, isn't it? This donkey of God's love goes with us and says to suffering and to death, you may not have my beloved. You may not name her. You may not claim him. They belong to me. Hmm? And so when we suffer and when we die, we are companioned. And indeed, when we die, we are pulled through death by the thread of God's love incarnate in Jesus Christ. You know, sometimes people say, Sheep or lambs are not smart. Hmm? But I, I, I've known sheep farmers in my life. And it was real close to one down in Tennessee. And she told me one day, she said, you know, Henry, I don't know why people always say that in Sunday school, that sheep aren't smart. It's not true. They're plenty smart. They just need protection. Come on, y'all. They just need protection. That's us. We're plenty smart. We know we're going to suffer and die along the way. We just need protection. We need to know that our suffering and our death is not the end of things. Huh? And this is God with us in Jesus Christ. But here's the deal. Here's the deal. Remember I said what I realized is that we do something with Jesus. Amen? Huh? We're not, we're not, we're not uh, spectators. We do something with Jesus. So my sense is the call of the gospel is for us to receive the love of God embodied in the donkey, right? Silly as that is, as protection for us. But then we got to pass that on, don't we? Huh? Because our friends and neighbors out there, they're not stupid. They just need protection. They need the protecting power of God's love passing through our lives. So I'm going to say something that's going to sound like an insult to you. We are the donkeys. No, really. Would you take that as your vocation? To be the donkey in the herd? That's why the world needs us. Because we have the protective love of God flowing through our bodies. And our call is very simple. We give it away. Huh? We give it away. Some people want to be great. Some people want to win. Some people want to be good looking. Some people want a lot of money. Some people want fill in the blank. Not us. Not us. We want to be helpful. We want to go with Jesus and pass on that protective love People need that love.